Most people say nice things are hard to achieve in watercolor, or watercolor is not a good medium to paint a nice thing, and I would agree. But it's not impossible once you are aware of the important elements of a nice thing. And today, I want to share those with you. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Because watercolors is transparent in nature, we typically can paint light on top of the dark. So unlike oil, acrylic, or even digital painting, we can tone the surface to a dark value and add light on top. We need to paint the color of the light first, then paint the dark in. It's a bit unnatural because most of the light in the night scene are artificial lights that we switch on. So painting light feel more natural that way. So painting a night scene in watercolor. Color feels a bit awkward, but it can be done, and it can look pretty good if it works out. Here are three things you want to know when painting a nice scene. Number one, prepare lots of mixtures. Because majority of the painting will be dark value, and watercolor is transparent in nature, you will need a lot more mixture to get the good consistent coverage of dark value. It's not that you can't mix new color on the fly, but you are running into the risk of inconsistent mixture and getting dirty washes. That muddy color or cauliflower edges we don't like to see in our painting. Yeah. That's going to be twice as bad because after you did a wash with some thick mixture and it is dry, and you try to go over it with a wet brush, the pigments are going to melt and muddy up the previous wash. So make sure you get a lot of dark mixtures ready. Squeeze out fresh new paint if you need to. Number two, push the warm and cool more. Most of the light colors at night are warm. Even if the light appears to be white, it usually looks better when it's warmer. On the other hand, it's better to make the dark environment cooler. This will just bring out the energy and the contrast between light and dark. It's mostly done in the first wash, which I will be showing you in a minute. And number three, pick a simple subject and simplify it even more. If you pick a scenery with many different complex light source, you are going to have an uphill battle because you are going to worry too much about preserving different lights. While you can use stuff like masking fluid or gouache to add some small light back. Too many light source can also be distracting. You usually want a bright major light source with some good objects getting lit by that. So just because you found a beautiful night scenery photo doesn't mean it's suitable for painting. Okay, so I'm going to do a small demo of painting a fire at night to show you the general process of painting a night scene. Then I'm going to show you the process of this painting I did. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's talk about this quick demo. So since this is a demo about painting nice scenery, I am not going to show you the process of the drawing for this one, just to save some time. So here I pre-mix some color for the color of the light, which is the fire. Now the center of the fire, I keep it white because that's the brightest value you can have on a paper, which is the paper white. But I did paint the surrounding with yellow and orange. And the thing about this warm light is that it will turn from bright white to yellow and to orange and eventually to more of a red color because the red color travel the furthest. So that's why when you see sunset, you see a lot of more red than any other color because that color travel the furthest. So same thing applies here. So the first swatch for this nice scenery is the color of the light. So aside from the fire, I also need to paint the light on the ground and also on the cowboy. And it's a little bit odd look at it right now because you only have white of the paper to compare. So before you painting any dark, the light actually feels a little bit darker. So you need to trust the process and paint the color of the light first. Now I start to paint the middle value and be sure to have a good amount of mixture for that. So a little bit cooler and as we come down, it gets a little bit darker and also a little bit warmer as it reaches the fire source. Now I mix a little bit warmer color, also a little bit lighter and do it wet on to wet to get that smoke in. It needs to be soft edge. And here I start to paint the dark side of the cowboy. 
but I'm also not worrying about the edge right now. They can blend into the background because I will probably come back and paint an even darker layer later. As dark as they look right now, when it dries, it's going to get lighter. Now we need to paint some warm light on the ground. The light on the ground is actually not that bright, definitely not as bright as the first wash. So we need to darken that just a little bit. Finishing that off with some dark edges. So we have that fire, which is completely white and we have some bright yellow and orange. And when it hits the ground, it gets a little bit darker and it fades off into dark value. And while it is still wet, I can do some wet onto wet, get some textures on the ground, some hint of shadow. I also paint a little bit of the very hot ember that's being burned. So now going into the figure just to give it a little bit more detail and some transition value. So we don't just have light and dark. We have some median values in there. And as you can see, the background are getting a lot lighter after it's dry. So that's the nature of watercolor. And this is why you need a good amount of mixture for you to do that darker wash. Because if your wash is too thin, you need to do another layer and the more layer you paint the more muddy it can get so try to mix a little bit darker than you think and try to mix more paint that's why whenever i paint a nice thing i will likely squeeze out some fresh paint to work with because i will be able to mix thicker mixture a little bit easier and use a bigger brush that always help as well because it will hold a little bit more paint so that you don't need to consistently reload your brush so I paint the background, I actually just paint almost like a solid color in the background. I didn't worry about the grass and stuff. This is a very simple exercise demo. So I'm not going to go into detail too much. Trying to fill that background and really get the light on the cowboy come out a little bit better. Paint the cast shadow. Get some more dark detail here and there. A little bit more warmth around the fire. Some hot ember and some textures on the fire. I'm also trying to warm up the light on the cowboy a little bit. Some more dark details. Here's the finished painting. I hope that was helpful. Even though it's a small painting, the process will remain the same when you're painting a bigger scenery. I hope you give that simple exercise a try. Do something small like that first, just to get used to it before you tackle a bigger scene. Now I'm going to share with you the process of this painting based on a photo I took a few weeks ago when we got some snow. Before we start, if you like my video and contents, please consider give it a like and subscribe Ring the bell icon so you won't miss out on more video like this one. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to show the process of the drawing. Since this... Okay, so for this one, I'm going to show the process of the drawing. The photo for this one actually was taken by me a couple weeks ago when we got the snow. However, when I took the photo, there's actually no car on the street light and the lights on the left car wasn't on. So I actually photoshopped those details in just to make it a little bit more interesting painting. So for the drawing, I start off with a doll 4B pencil just to get the basic shape down. And I added figures here just for a little bit of a scale reference, but also it'll look a little bit more intimate when there's two figures there. I just kind of want to add that in. And now I start to use a mechanical pencil and make a cleaner drawing. Now, since this is a street scenery, so there is a little bit of perspective involved, but I try to eyeball most of it. As long as it looks natural, it's okay. I didn't do the value study for this one because it's actually pretty straightforward. If you look at the photo, the sky and the snow are pretty much the same value. And the tree and the rest of the house 
is pretty much the same dark value as well. The only tricky part is to get the light value, which is the light painted. So we already went through the process of how to paint a nice scenery in a very, very simple way. So let's see if we can try to bring that concept over to this more complex scenery. But the reason I picked this specific scenery is that this is a pretty simple scenery. We have our street light as our major light source. And there's a secondary light source on the left, but that's just more for something a little bit of a visual interest that serves as a balance. So the process is the same. I make some of the warm colors for the light, but I also pre wet some part of the paper because I don't want any hard edges when I'm painting those colors of the light. So start with a yellow color and we fade off into more of a red color. And the red color, I add a little bit more alizarin crimson to fade that into more of a purple color. So that would transition naturally into a blue color later when we are painting the darker value. I also use a little bit of a masking fluid just for the headline, the left and the street light. And right now it is this awkward stage that the light actually looks darker than the white of the paper. And again, you need to have faith in the process and just try to go with it and believe that after you paint the darker value, it's going to come together. Here, I squeeze out some fresh new paint so it'll be easier for me to mix a darker value. So mostly just some blue color, add a little bit of burnt umber to neutralize that blue a little bit, but mostly still remaining blue and start painting the sky. So we work our way down. The lamppost actually got a little bit of light on it, so I'll try to paint around that. Also the light from the window and so on. So now I switch to a smaller brush, try to transition from blue to purple. So here I actually have two brushes. One is the blue color and one is more of a purple and warmer color. So it'll be easier for me to switch around and change the color for transition. It's not easy. This stage is actually quite stressful because I don't want it to dry. I want some soft transition from cool to warm, from dark to light. So I really need to plan ahead thinking where should I paint the light, where should I transition from dark to light. So I am painting closer to the light area, the hot spot, and adding a little bit more orange in transition, and leave a little bit of the hot spot there and I squeeze out the moisture of my brush and use a damp brush for a little bit of soft transition. But as you can see as I paint the darker value and the cooler color in you already start to see the warmth of the light and a little bit of the value contrast. Now I start to paint in the dark value and as you can see I mix a good amount of mixture and I actually use a little bit of neutral tint just to help me to get that darker value faster. So here I really need to focus on painting the shape. So from the background tree, that actually connect to the house. The walls of the house are mostly really dark. So it's important that you connect the background trees to the house. And in between, I will switch the color just a little bit. Even though they are all dark value, they can still have a little bit of warm and cool. So here I'm trying to paint around the figure just a little bit and give some snow details on the background. But for the most part, I want the figure to be pretty loose too. And I'm painting them wearing very big jacket and stuff. So they kind of look a little bit blobby actually. But when you're cold, you're wearing all those bubble jacket and you look kind of extra puffy in a way. So that light pole actually 
allowed me to do the background wash in two different areas. So the one on the right, I paint that first and that connect to the figure and everything. So I can work on the figure just a little bit longer because I don't need to worry about that wash being dried because of the light pole. So now I'm painting the other side. So same thing, the background trees and stuff, they are mostly pretty dark. Connect that to the house and also give it a little bit more details for the tree branches that's in the middle ground. I don't worry about the snow details on the tree branches and stuff. I actually did a video about painting a snow scenery. Those tiny little details sometimes doesn't really help the overall read. It's far more important to have clean washes and easy to read shape than trying to dwell into the detail. So I quickly come back trying to connect that dark wash in the background. It's not dry yet, so the connection can still be made. So painting the dark trees on the left and also some tree branches. These elegant tree branches are pretty important because they kind of lead your eyes around and that creates some visual interest as well. Because most of the tree in the scenery are pretty dark because it's a nice scenery. So you don't see a lot of details and volume and variations when it comes to the dark trees and the houses. So a little bit of interesting shape like those tree branches can help. And I'm continue that wash down, connecting the shape where I can. Again, try to paint around the light, preserve those light. So now we got all three values, the light value, the medium value, and the dark value. Now I'll switch to my Escoda Perla, a little bit snappier hair so that I can paint a hard surface object such as the car here. So I start off by just painting the dark here. I will paint some transition value later after it's dry because I can just paint it on top. This part is a little bit tricky because while the car is lit by the street light, it's very bright, but you also need to think about how bright can certain things get. Obviously the back of the car doesn't receive as much light, so it will be darker. And the window also have a little bit of a transition from middle value to light value as well. So those are the things that you really need to observe very carefully and try to recreate that and, and to convey that sense of structure. So now I'm painting the road using mostly purple color and transition that into orange and then yellow to the hot spot of the light. There is some snow on the road, so I skip around just a little bit. Also trying to hint some sense of thickness by painting a little bit of dark next to the light area. So this painting got some sense of exploration while I'm trying to come up with a plan to continue. So I'm adding some warm color for the figure's face. And I also use that to paint over the car to create some transition value from dark to light. Also fix the silhouette just a little bit and add just a little bit of value on the left windshield. So that just creates some sense of structure. So now I start to paint the figure. Again, they are wearing big puffy jackets. So I paint them mostly with that kind of shape in mind. So they look a little bit blobby, but that's what you wear when it gets pretty cold and in the snow. Now I remove the masking fluid and I'm starting trying to paint a little bit of the warmth around the highlight and try to create a little bit of a transition. So painting the front grill of the car, but also transition that to a warmer color because of the light in the front. 
So after painting some details, I use my bigger brush, mix a darker blue color, just to create that contrast again, push that contrast a little bit more. So the hot spot, the light area will feel lighter and warmer, and while the rest of the street gets a little bit darker. So while it is still wet, I do some details wet on to wet, some dirt under the snow, some sickness of the snow build up and the street and so on. But if you squint your eyes, you can see the light is definitely starting to work. So in terms of the overall picture, this is pretty much done. It's all there. I'm just adding a little bit more final touches of dark details. I really like this scenery. It feels quiet and that warm and cool contrast and light in the dark. It just feels really, really nice. So a couple areas still feels a little bit too light. Even though I try to make some darker values and paint into it, after they are dry, it still feels a little bit too light. So I'm trying to push that dark just a little bit more. But this dark area, they are mostly pretty small, so it's not a big major wash. So it should still look pretty clean. And here is the finished painting. I actually go over the sky with another glaze just to make it a little bit darker and I use white gouache to make the street light glow just a little bit more. I hope you like this painting and this demo. Painting a nice scene with watercolor is definitely not easy. Although it can be done, some people just might not like it. So if this is not your cup of tea or coffee, don't force yourself to do it, but it's always nice to try something new. That's it for today's video. You can click here to watch more. Please also check out my website at cafewatercolor.com. Sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.